Okay, welcome back to my channel. I don't read very many gothic themed books, but The Silent Girl by Kelly Hurd comes very, very close to that. We have a woman who wakes up in a hospital with several serious injuries, but one of the most serious injuries of all is amnesia. She doesn't know who she is, so she decides to call herself Sophie, and that's what they call her at the hospital. There's one thing that she does remember, and that is the name of her brother. And she also remembers a sense of desperation when it comes to finding him or him finding her. So then the question begs itself, why is Sophie in the hospital, and why was she injured so, so badly? left for dead even. So Sophie decides to just go on with her life. She takes on a job. She starts working at a mansion, working on the grounds of the mansion. And when she starts to, she starts to feel a sense of foreboding. And that's where the gothic sense in this book comes in. But nonetheless, nonetheless, despite the eerie feelings that she gets as she's working this job her boss Nathaniel is rather distant but likable but rather distant and he has a young son and this kind of gives Sophie a feeling of safety um, even though she's concerned about her past concerned about her injuries concerned about the eerie feeling that she gets in the mansion, she still feels a measure of safety when it comes to Nathaniel. So as she's working to restore this property, we start to get into the mystery behind her past. And that's where this the novel takes kind of a then and now type of approach. We're mostly in the present in this book, but there are some aspects of it that go to the past to try to help unravel the mystery that surrounds Sophie. Meanwhile, Sophie and Nathaniel grow kind, of, grow kind of close. And her young son, I love him, and and he he's a really good catalyst to helping Sophie become comfortable in her own skin, despite the fact that some of these issues won't come clear to her. And I thought that the character development was spot on for a number of reasons. One is Sophie's nature, despite all the uh, situations and circumstances she had in life, who she was on the inside, even though she may not have been able to recall her memory, that she was a solid person, so that characterization was great. But then there was Nathaniel. His goodness shone through. Now, can you imagine a woman not knowing who she is, not having any personal property, not having any money, being able to trust somebody? Well, Nathaniel's goodness shone through, but also his vulnerability because of his past and what he was dealing with. And so I loved that, that part of the story and how that was developed along with the fact that Sophie started to draw close to him. And then Nathaniel's young son, Lincoln, I think he was the bright light in this dark, dark book. It was an engaging and thrilling read. It, it had dark suspense, a little bit of spookiness, and then the twists and the turns blew my mind. As a matter of fact, the book itself touched on uh, a certain topic that I didn't expect to come in the manner that it did in this book. And I guess uh, I'm just going to say that it was shocking. It was tension. It was tense filled. The conclusion was like running a race. Let's say you're running, uh, uh, running the mile. You're pacing along quite well. But then when you get close to that finish line, you've got to really sprint. Well, this book did just that. It built everything at a nice, nice level. And then the conclusion boom, it hit hard, it, it went fast, it, it came, and it really made an impact on me. As a matter of fact, I was surprised at the level of that twist at the end of this book. So that was it. That's called uh, The Silent Girl by Kelly Hurd. 
it came out on April the 9th so this uh, review is already up on my blog and everywhere else and that'll be it for now bye bye